Hello and welcome back to another brewing video. Uh, today we're going to be making mead. Mead is... It's not wine, uh, but the easiest way that I describe it to people who don't know what it is, is it's kind of like wine, but you use honey instead of grapes. Uh, there's very little heat involved. Uh, in fact, the only thing I had to boil is I had to boil a little bit of water because uh, you'd use a, a yeast nutrient. This stuff here. It's a tiny packet, but you only use the one teaspoon per gallon, so it actually goes a long way. I don't remember the exact cost of this. It was a couple of bucks. It wasn't too expensive. So meat is kind of interesting. Uh, depending on what you add to it for flavor, if you add anything for flavor, the name changes. <laughs> They're all under the mead umbrella, but there's a whole bunch of different names. I don't remember them all off the top of my head right now. Also, depending on what you add for flavor, the color changes. This carboy is from my last batch of mead uh, that will be ready to bottle soon, actually. I just added a little bit of vanilla to it. Uh, so the color didn't really change at all. The flavor changed a bit. Um, this, a friend of mine brewed, and he used strawberry and blackberry. It came out this nice red. If you used just blackberry, it would have been a bit more blue. This is really yummy. Also, this has a real cork in it, so if you do that, make sure you store it on its side, not straight up. It's only straight up because it's in the video right now. Uh, so to start with, as always, sanitize everything, and then once that's all done, you want to start with about six liters, around a gallon and a half worth of water in your brewing bucket. I am using my bottom bucket, the, the tap on it, because that will allow me to check the gravity with the hydrometer. With the beers I brew, I tend to know where they're going to come out percentage-wise. This stuff I don't. Uh, I am following a recipe, more or less, but because I couldn't get the exact measurements of honey, I had to upscale the recipe. I don't know precisely how strong it's going to come out. Um, yeah, so I will be, uh, the first thing to add is the yeast nutrient, uh, which was about four teaspoons of this, because I am upsizing it, uh, into a uh, pot of boiling water. Stir it in. That's going to smell bad. <laughs> not going to lie to you, that's going to smell real bad. But, you know, it's not a big deal. Pour it into the water and stir. I'll be right back. Back with my pot of yeast nutrient. And yeah, this stuff smells bad. <laughs> Once it's poured in there, that pot didn't just come straight off the, the thing, by the way, the water was still warm. Didn't just come straight out of the stove. Once it's poured in there, give it a short start to try and dissolve it into the water. And now we're ready to add the honey. The honey that I bought for this one was a, uh, I bought it at a farmer's market. Uh, so it's just pure honey, nothing fancy about it. It's uh, wildflower honey specifically, which is a different type of honey than I used for this. This I just used uh, unpasteurized liquid honey from that I bought from Costco, and it worked fine. Um, I have already sampled some just to make sure it was working right. I know approximately what the alcohol percentage in this is. It, it's currently sitting at about five and a quarter, a little over five percent alcohol by volume. Uh, yeah, so to start with the honey, sit it in a pot, uh, sit the container of honey in a pot of hot water to help loosen it up. Let it sit for a little while. Mine's been sitting for about 20 minutes or so. Open the container up, pour it in there. Be back in a couple of minutes. So I'm back with my bucket of honey, and it smells really good. This is a 3 kilogram bucket, which is 6.6 .6 pounds. Uh, the actual recipe I found called for just under 2 kilograms, uh, 3.9 pounds. Um, it's 2.2 pounds per kilogram, by the way. So I'm just going to add this to what's already in there. And because it pours nicely like that, because it has been sitting in the, uh, sitting in a tub of hot water for a little while. <clears throat> now, I know I said when I was brewing beer that it's not really worth filling the thing with hot water and shaking it to get the, the last residue out. I am going to do that with this because the lid will go back on, so I can do that safely. Uh, that's a major concern. I mean, don't. this is supposed to be a hobby. Don't burn yourself. Be back. Uh, yeah, you don't need to watch me do that, so I will do that, and then I need to bring the water volume all the way up to the top and add the last couple of things. So I will be back when I'm ready to add the last couple of things to this. Welcome back. So I have this up to the volume I want it at. 
Uh, again, I am upsizing the recipe a fair amount because, as I said before, I'm using more honey than the recipe calls for. Uh, this will still probably come out a little stronger than the uh, than what the uh, recipe intends. Probably a little stronger than this. This was also an upscale batch, an upscale batch, but I'm using even more honey. I want it to be a little stronger. I don't want it to be incredibly strong. I want it to be a little stronger. So what's in here now is called must. Uh, and there's one more thing I have to do before I can add the final stuff to it. I need to stir it. This is going to take a while. Uh, so I'm not going to make you watch me do this because you have to stir this, which is essentially room temperature, water, and honey, until the honey is thoroughly dissolved into the water. This is going to take about 10, 15 minutes. So I'm going to stop recording again, go get my tablet, watch a YouTube video while I do this. I'll see you soon. Okay, I'm done stirring the must, as it's now called, which is essentially just honey and water. I have taken a sample of it to test with the hydrometer. Uh, mostly off shot, so I will pick this up and completely ruin it being steady. Uh, essentially what you do when you want to do that is you put the hydrometer in the tube, and then you fill the tube with liquid until the hydrometer floats. There are lines along the edge along the side of this thing. You look at where the water level is, that gives you a starting gravity. It'll also give you a estimate of approximately where it's going to end up. Uh, when I did this batch of mead, it estimated 5%, and it's right around that mark the last time I was, I was able to test it. Uh, this time it's estimated that it'll be approximately 8%. Now, that's not exact. Uh, it's a ballpark range. You get the idea. Uh, the next thing I'm adding, big surprise, vanilla extract. Again, not a lot, a few teaspoons full. I'm probably going to go with four. We'll see. See how much my hand takes, see if I spill a whole bunch again. That was pretty funny. and spill colossal amounts of it. And give it another quick stir. Ooh, that smells really nice. I really like the smell of that uh, vanilla extract. Uh, realistically, that tiny amount of vanilla extract I, changed wouldn't, I, I added wouldn't change the result of the hydrometer. thing to add and I forgot to bring it out before I started recording so I apologize for stepping off camera. Last thing, last thing I need to add is the yeast. Uh, you may notice this isn't in a tiny little packet. That's because this is yeast I harvested from my last batch of meat. When I get to the part of the video where I'm racking, going from uh, the brewing bucket into the carboy. I'll show you about the uh, harvesting. It's it's fairly easy. And you just pour it on top like you would if it was in a tiny packet. And that's it. That is a really gross container. Now it's just time to add the lid and the uh, airlock. I think I just spilled a tiny amount of sanitizer in my coffee. It's not going to kill me. Okay. So the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, the initial gravity I took on this, which was uh, 1060. I'm just going to use dry erase marker. Write it red on the lid just so I can remember it later. Right on the damp lid. I probably should have wiped that off first. Hold on. And that's it for now. Uh, there is another step I have to do before it can be racked. I will see you when it's ready for that in about two days' time. Hello and welcome back. It's been approximately two weeks since we uh, started the mead brewing. I think it may have been a day more, whatever, close enough. 
Uh, and about 12 or 13 days since we added the last yeast nutrient. The meat is now, it's done primary fermentation, it's ready now to be racked and go on to secondary fermentation. Uh, I talked a bit about that in the cider video. <clears throat> Excuse me. And with the cider I said you don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, you can also use with beer, by the way, to help clarify the beer. Uh, but again, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing like I do, one bucket brewing from liquid milk extract, not really that important. With mead, you want to do this. Mead is not done at the two-week mark. It needs to be removed from the majority of the, of the yeast. It needs to be given time to rest and clarify and mature. And we move it into... A carboy. This is a three gallon carboy. Uh, I don't remember how many liters that is. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, when I did this, I, uh, if you'll remember, I, well, you saw it earlier in this video. It's been two weeks for me, but it's only been a few minutes, I guess, for anyone watching. There's more than three gallons in here. The leftover is going to go into my empty cask. Uh, <clears throat> the casks aren't great for racking into. You end up with a broad surface area, leaves the mead vulnerable to uh, oxidization. There's no hard airlock on these. I'm not worried about that because honestly, the excess that's in here isn't going to stay in here indefinitely. I'm going to use it to test the gravity. I'm, I'm going to use it to taste it, and it's not that much. It's it's. Only a few liters, it's about a gallon. It's not that bad. The way we get it from here, the way we get the meat from here into here. Put that sucker on the floor, and we get our transfer system. Uh, in case you're wondering, uh, because you always have to sanitize, the way I sanitize the transfer system and the carboy is pretty simple actually. The bucket that is behind me is currently full more or less, of sanitization fluid. I use the transfer system to transfer the fluid from that bucket into the carboy, thereby sanitizing the tubing, all the hose, all that. No problem. And for the exterior, I just submerge it in the fluid for a few minutes. Now, don't mind me as I send my excess airlock spiraling all over the room. It's fine. We remove the airlock that's in here. Let's switch it over to the bucket that has. There we go. It just has uh, sanitization fluid in it. Put that in through the hole that the airlock was in. Now, if you have uh, the style of lid where you don't need this rubber stopper, because it's a very small rubber gasket, obviously you won't have the hole. Put this in. You have to take the lid off. Bit of a pain in the butt, in my opinion. It's part of why I uh, prefer this style with the big cork and the larger hole. You can do it, but whatever. Maybe you prefer the other lids. Maybe, like me, you prefer this method. To each their own. Uh, my hose is a little longer than it needs to be. And as you may be able to see on the camera, this is my bottling bucket. I could run the hose from the tap. Um, and in the future, I may get a shorter length of hose to do just that with. But for now, I don't have a hose uh, like that. And honestly, this does give a bit more control. So I'll stick with this method. And again, like I showed in the bottling video to get this started, I apologize, I'm about to step mostly out of frame as I stand up. In order to get this started, I'm going to change so you can see. There we go. You lift the top. You may have to try this a couple times to get it primed. Lift it up, there we go. Plunge it back down in. And the Meat is now flowing through the tube into the carboy underneath. It'll take uh, just a couple of minutes. Um, 
Most of the carboys are sharp right now, so you, you know, I can't really do anything about that. Well, I can lift it a bit. I don't want to lift it too high or the transfer will stop. But, uh, yeah, the mead is now transferring into the carboy. Uh, I may have just stopped it by doing that, <laughs> but sending it down should get it going again. If not, I can just raise the plunger or push it back down. No big deal. This will take a few minutes, and when this is getting up into the neck area here, where it's narrow, I'm going to stop it um, and switch it over to the, the, the remainder over to this. Realistically, I'm not actually going to stop it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the hose out, put my finger over the end, and just move it. Might make a bit of a mess. If you do want to actually stop it without making a mess, lift this end up, and once it hits air, it'll sputter a bit. It'll basically stop the last liquid into the out of the hose into the carboy. Uh, I will bring you back once everything is fully transferred because this is going to take a couple of minutes. Not long, three or four, but long enough. I'll see you soon. Welcome back. Uh, it's only been a couple of minutes. I have completed racking the mead into these two containers. I checked three gallons is uh, a little more than 11 liters. It's 11.3 something, 11.35 or something like that, liters. And there is one gallon in here, which is just shy of uh, four liters. It's about uh, 3.78, according to the calculator I used on Google. Last thing to do, the airlock. This doesn't have the cork. Uh, you can get them with the cork that will fit in on the uh, in the top of the carboy but this model has a second valve I can pull the white stopper off in case pressure is becoming a problem and release pressure that way uh, you can release pressure with a normal one normal airlock just by lifting the thing up if it's really going absolutely crazy and you're concerned you, you can just pick it up so whichever method doesn't really matter Simple, put the small plastic part on top, and pour some liquid into the top of the airlock. I use uh, sanitizing fluid, a lot of people just use water. It's fine, it doesn't end up in your mead. The whole point is to prevent air from ending up in your mead, beer, cider, whatever you have to be brewing. This doesn't have a traditional airlock, it has uh, the thread uh, that this lid screws down on has grooves and it allows air gas to get out some air to get in that's why it's not ideal for this purpose it's worked fine for the ciders um, it worked fine for small batches of beer it's not ideal but as I said before the Mr. Beers are perhaps not the best equipment they are an amusing way to try it out, if you want, uh, specifically beer or cider. But yeah, um, that's more or less it for mead. Now this is going to sit here and clarify for a minimum of a month. I'm probably going to let this sit even longer than that because there's a lot more honey in this batch than my last batch. Uh, which reminds me, the more honey uh, by volume, the more alcohol by volume because it's the sugar that gets turned into alcohol. When I initially set this up I tested the gravity and I tested it again before I started filming uh, and I believe I said that it was targeted to the estimation on the initial testing was right around 8%. It's currently sitting at about uh, a little less than that 7.8 ish. Uh, the alcohol strength will continue to go up in the carboy um, one of the last things I'm going to do about a week or so before I bottle is I'm going to put uh, just a tiny amount of potassium sorbate in there, which will make the yeast go to sleep, essentially. It will stop the yeast from consuming any more sugars. I will add a bit more honey and give it a good stir. Um, and then I will let that sit. Sorry, said that wrong. I will add the potassium sorbate. I'll let that sit for a couple of days, 
then I will add a bit more honey. No more than half a pound. Give it a good stir, let that sit for another few days, and then bottle. That's called back sweetening because the yeast will eventually pull all of the flavor out of your mead if you, if you don't put the potassium sorbate in. And if you find the flavor is a bit weak, you can add honey to bring some of the flavor back. I think that more or less wraps things up. Like I said, this is going to sit for a minimum of a month, maybe a month and a half, two months. Then after you bottle, the longer you let it sit, the better. Um, typically, it's done aging in the bottle by about the six-month mark. It's, it's probably about as good as it's going to get. I don't know that my mead will last that long because you can't drink it right away. I mean, I could pull a glass out of this and drink it right now if I want to. I'm not going to, but I can. I make small batches of mead because I enjoy it. If I decide to do something particularly special, then I'll let it age. But for the most part, I only let it age, age in the bottle a couple of weeks before I start enjoying it. Uh, what you do is entirely up to you. Let it sit for six months, have a bottle here and there before then, do what you like. But whatever you do, please drink responsibly. That is... I know I say that in every video, but it really is the most important, most important thing. All of this is fun, but it's not fun if you're not responsible. So please, drink responsibly, and thank you for watching.